Good morning, Holy Cross. He is risen. Hallelujah. Welcome uh, indeed uh, to worship here this uh, Sunday morning, what we call the second Sunday of Easter. Uh, we had a great Easter Sunday uh, last week and a great Holy Week uh, as well. So uh, thank you guys uh, for uh, all that you do and all your work. Thank the ladies uh, who help with uh, and who do the, the arrangements and everything that goes along with that. Uh, it was just a good uh, experience and uh, helped us uh, remember and rejoice in Jesus. And so uh, that's really cool, uh, and I'm glad for it. Uh, a couple of announcements for you. First of all, I will throw it to Mr. Dennis. Uh, Mr. Dennis, you got something to uh, tell us about something upcoming. Got a mic on? There we go. I just want to give you all a heads up. Um, sorry. Uh, going to be planning a few fundraisers uh, between now and the end of June for all the campers going to Camp Lone Star. Um, and we do have one opening for a middle school uh, boy. Um, we had uh, somebody drop out. So that's available um, if anybody's interested that hasn't had the opportunity. So, But uh, just as we go through the summer building up to that, I just want to give you all that heads up and uh, just ask for y'all's continued prayers for the campers and the camp success and for you know spiritual uh, building and such for those kiddos so uh, Adam and I'll still be going with them uh, it's at June 25th through the 30th um, if anybody else is interested there could be some spots available so high school or middle school um, if so if somebody's still interested let me know I can look and see if those spots are available um, so just look forward to those fundraisers and we appreciate y'all's support um, and then, too, I just want to remind, uh, I'm still doing the young adult class in the Old Sanctuary on Wednesday nights at 630. Um, got a, a good group, consistent group coming to that. So I'd love to have other members uh, coming to that. So it's college age through 30 is kind of where we're, we're doing that uh, as far as the age group. So right now we're studying prayer and the importance of it and understanding prayer and how it can uh, really benefit our, our Christian walk. So with that, thank you all. All right, thank you. Uh, and as we start getting into uh, that uh, summer time, uh, the, these, these things at the end of the year and getting into the summer are all happening. Uh, we have Confirmation Sunday coming up, the first Sunday in May. Uh, that will be here before that. That's really close. That's right. It's coming up. Uh, so that uh, is then. Uh, in June, we have Vacation Bible School. We have opened a reservation, uh, uh, registration for that, uh, both for our uh, our kids and for our helpers and, and workers and volunteers and stuff so uh, please uh, be ready for that because it's coming and uh, we want to really blow it out this year and let it be a great um, way for us to impact our community here uh, and so uh, those things are there uh, and then in July uh, we're having a week of service uh, here for our high school kids uh, that'll be in our area helping out a bunch of, I've got a bunch of stuff lined up, it's going to be cool. So um, we are there, and summer's coming, and uh, we're excited about uh, the ministry opportunities that we have uh, along with that. So all that said, we've come here for worship, so let's go ahead and stand and greet one another.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. That victory remains ours by a God-given faith and hope. That hope is kept alive as we daily repent of our sins and remain in the promises of God. For if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Amen. Upon this your confession, I by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word announce the grace of God to you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And let us pray. Almighty God, grant that we who have celebrated the Lord's resurrection may, by your grace, confess in our life and conversation that Jesus is Lord and God, through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And please be seated for the reading of Scripture. reading for the second Sunday of Easter is from Acts chapter 5. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised Jesus, whom you killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. When they heard this, they were enraged and wanted to kill them. But a Pharisee in the council named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law held in honor by all the people, stood up and gave orders to put the men outside for a little while. And he said to them, Men of Israel, take care what you are about to do with these men. For before these days, Thutis rose up, claiming to be somebody, and a number of men, about 400, joined him. He was killed, and all who followed him were dispersed and came to nothing. After him, Judas the Galilean rose up in the days of the census and drew away some of the people after him. He too perished, and all who followed him were scattered. So in the present case, I tell you, keep away from these men and let them alone. For if this plan or this undertaking is of man, it will fail. But if it is of God, you will not be able to overthrow, overthrow them. You might even be found opposing God. So they took his advice, and when they had called in the apostles, they beat them and charged them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. Then they left the presence of the council rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer dishonor for the name. And every day in the temple and from house to house, they did not cease teaching and preaching Jesus as the Christ. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from 1 Peter chapter 1. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again into a living hope 
through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, thou now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him. And rejoice with joy that an inexpressible and, in, and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you, as the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of anyone, they are forgiven. If you withhold forgiveness from anyone, it is withheld. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands and the mark of his nails and place my finger into the marks of the nails and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. And Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, <coughs> which are not written in this book. But these things are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. And this is the gospel of the Lord. The congregation may be seated. I would invite the children forward for the kids' message. You guys come on down. Yeah. Good to see you. Hey guys, all right, be careful, all right, we got you, yeah, come on down, come on down, <laughs> all right, well, did everybody have a good Easter, yeah, I got to see, uh, uh, yesterday, I got to see my nephew, Bruce, and I got to give him his Easter basket, which I was really excited for, I was even more excited because since I was giving it to him after Easter, everything when I, that I bought for it was 50% off. That's how to do it. Yeah. Uh, but no, man, that was good. It was good to see him. It's good to see family and friends during these special times, isn't it? That's really cool. That's really nice. Uh, so I want to share with you a story that I just uh, read, uh, and it's about what happens Easter night. And so that's after Jesus is rose from the dead Easter morning, and he sees a few of the people Easter morning. Uh, but then, the Bible tells us that the disciples are all together in the upper room, and Jesus came and stood among them. And so Jesus, and this is a, a heavenly power, that Jesus, even though the doors were locked, 
He didn't have to open the door. He didn't have to do knock on the door. He just showed up in the middle of the room and said, peace be with you. And it's not like he was some kind of ghost or something like that because they could see, uh, and, you know, I wasn't there, but I think for me, probably the first thing that I would want to do when I saw Jesus uh, is I would want to give him a hug. And I would want to, you know, kind of put my hand on his shoulder and make sure he's really there, right? Because it's, it's an unusual thing. Um, so I'm guessing that the disciples did some stuff like that too. Uh, but there's one of the disciples who's not there, and his name is Thomas. And we talk about him every year, the week after Easter, uh, because Thomas said he wasn't there the first time. And he said, look, unless I see Jesus myself, and if I, unless I touch him myself, I will never believe. Okay? Now what the Bible tells us, though, is Jesus came another time when Thomas was there and kind of the same type of thing happened. And then Jesus told Thomas, and even though nobody had said anything about what Thomas said to Jesus, he knew because he's Jesus. And uh, he said, Thomas, come over here. And he says, see where they put the, see where probably up here is where it was. See where they put the nails and see where they did the spear in my side. Don't disbelieve, but instead believe. Yeah, we don't know for sure. It's the same word. It's complicated. I'll, I'll tell you more about it when you're older. Um, but uh, one of the things, though, that Jesus said that's really neat, because Thomas sees what happens, he feels bad for doubting Jesus, and he looks at Jesus and says, my Lord and my God, which is one of the best confessions in all of Scripture that we have of Jesus being God. Uh, and then Jesus says something that really helps us. Uh, Jesus says, you believe because you have seen, blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. And the reason that's really important for us is that we're not old enough that we were around when Jesus was here, are we? Nobody that you know is, okay? So anybody who you look at, anybody who you talk to, anybody who's teaching you, they weren't here when Jesus was here, but we still believe in Jesus because Jesus says, and he says it to Thomas there, blessed are those who have not seen, that's us, and yet believe. And so we can believe in Jesus. And our friends and our parents and grandparents who are here, they believe in Jesus even though they haven't seen Jesus. Uh, and so... Um, that's one thing that we can remember and take away, is that we don't have to be like Thomas and doubt Jesus, but instead we can believe in Jesus. Do you believe in Jesus? Yeah, I do too. Everybody, we, most of the people here do, I'm sure, okay? So even though we haven't seen him with our eyes, we know that Jesus is real, and we are blessed because we believe even though we haven't seen. Okay, let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for rising for us. Thank you for showing yourself to Thomas. Thank you for blessing us. We love you, Jesus. And all God's people said, amen. All right, thank you guys so much. Y'all can go back by your families, careful, and we will sing.
May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. I want to look at this passage from John chapter 20 that talks about when the disciples were together on Easter night. I mentioned the story of Thomas to the kids. I want to focus uh, today on mainly that first meeting where Thomas wasn't there. Now, uh, as we look at that and look at the details of that particular story and that historical event, uh, just a quick reminder of some of what we're dealing with uh, when we look at Scripture. We have the Bible. It is 66 books, 39 in the Old Testament, 27 in the New Testament. So today we're reading in the New Testament. There are four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, that give us a picture of the life of Jesus. Then there's 21 letters. They explain to us the meaning of Jesus in our lives. There's one book of the history of the early church. That's the book of Acts. It's kind of Luke part two. They're both written by Luke, but it gives us that church history lesson. And then the last book of the Bible, the Revelation of St. John, uh, that is a book of prophecy. Now, we have these different genres of scripture and, and of the types of books that are in the New Testament, but I'll tell you, all of them, the central point is that Jesus is Alive. That is the living reality in the universe then and even today that Jesus is alive. Now, we're going to encounter Jesus here in his first appearance to these terrified disciples. And we'll ask, how did the risen Jesus act? What did the risen Jesus say to them and hear their first encounter with him for most of them? So we'll start looking at that in chapter 20, and we'll just kind of work through uh, this short section here. Uh, chapter 20, verse 19. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, peace be with you. So the evening of Easter Sunday, Mary Magdalene had encountered Jesus earlier in the day, Peter and John as well. Uh, he now in the upper room, we have 10 disciples at once, but for whatever reason, Thomas is not there. We don't know why. We just know that he's not there. And it gives us some details of what's happening here. First of all, we read that the doors are locked. And that, as I mentioned to the kids a moment ago, Jesus did not have to knock. Uh, he did not have to open the door. They did not have to open the door. Jesus was just there. And he wasn't a ghost. He showed them his hands and his side. And he, you know, you can touch, you can see. This is a physical body, but not exactly like ours. It's kind of this thing where it's the same, yet it's different. That's the resurrected Christ. And so we're there now with the disciples. Here's, here's one thing I'll tell you about your life when we consider this and we consider Jesus' presence here with them. Jesus can go where nobody else can go in your life. He can go places a counselor can't go, that a doctor can't go, that a, a lover can't go. There's places in your heart where Jesus can go that they can't. And he certainly shows up here in a place where he's not supposed to be able to be there. Okay? There is nowhere, there's no part of you, there is no depth of personhood that Jesus can't penetrate. And he's the only one who can do this. He's the only one who can get in there. Uh, and so, we've got all these complex layers of our lives, that's certainly the case. And there's stuff about it that we don't understand. Here's the good news. Th those things that you don't understand about life, that is all familiar territory to Jesus. So Jesus shows up. Uh, it tells us, though, that they were afraid. They were hiding. Now, this is sometimes we give the disciples a hard time for this. I think this was a totally understandable uh, thing for them to do. We had had this uh, violent, you know, attack that had taken place uh, on Holy Thursday night, where Jesus was 
arrested and they kept him up all night and the show trial, false witnesses, the whole deal. They, they were afraid that they were next. I, I understand that kind of fear. But see, it's just in that. It's in those places and spaces of fear. This is when we are in need of the risen, living Jesus the most. When we're in these places of fear, sometimes what we call the, uh, the dark night of the soul. That's where Jesus can go. Uh, and so it, it depends. You, you know, whatever it is that you are going through and it plays out differently in, in different people's lives. You know, maybe you've got a fear that you won't fulfill your obligations. Maybe you've got a fear that your kids and your grandkids are making bad decisions. Maybe you have a fear that they are going to to, to drift away, to fall away from saving faith in Jesus. Maybe you're scared of having failures at, at work or in other places in your relationships. Maybe, well, we'll see next week, right? Maybe you're afraid that you're not going to have enough money to pay your taxes. These are all forms of fear. And Jesus comes and Jesus says, I, I come into my own when you are afraid. See, when you are afraid, I do what nobody else can do. And he certainly does it for the disciples here. And, and so, um, and, and here's what I encourage you to do also, uh, is that if you are in that place where you're afraid and it's, 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 we do this to ourselves. We confound and compound our fear into doubt. And we say, well, I'm, I'm afraid of something or I'm afraid of a person, you know, I'm afraid that something's going to happen. I have anxiety about that. Um, and, I, and I know I shouldn't feel that way. And so I'm not going to go to the Lord to talk to him about it. I'm, you know, I'll wait till I have got it figured out and then I will go and talk to him. Brother, sister, that, that, that ain't it. No, he calls you into his presence now. He says things all over Scripture, he does, other people do things like free, uh, uh, excuse me, he says things like, fear not, I am with you, right, in, in the psalm, right, my rod, my staff, they, they, they comfort you, be not dismayed, be not alone, I am your God, I will help you, I will be your rear guard, he'll be with you, you don't wait so you gotta, until you have all your ducks in a row to talk to the Lord. You talk to the Lord now. You talk to the Lord out of your weakness, out of your fear, out of your anxiety. And so the doors were locked. They were afraid. And then Jesus comes and stands in their midst. And this is our reminder. Jesus is not this distant deity, somebody who's out there, a, a blind watchmaker, somebody who's just set things in motion and then takes a step back and says, all right, you guys figure it out now. No, he's, he's, just, he's very personal. Right? He's with his friends, guys who have gone through a lot of trauma over the past week, a lot of ups and downs even. Uh, if not as physically as Jesus did, certainly not as physically as Jesus did, but uh, they've been beat up emotionally, spiritually, fear, anxiety, all of this. Sleep deprived, probably, tossing and turning. No, he's, he's personal and he comes with them and says, I'm not playing games, I'm not messing with your faith or anything like that. I am coming to you. I am going to be with you. And he does this for you and for me. And that's my prayer for you, is that you would experience the living Jesus, that you would know him, right? That even as he draws near to you, you draw near to him. Because he will comfort your fear. He will come into your midst. 
He will be with you. And that's all how he acts. That's what he does. Now, what does he say? And as we read the passage, he says, peace be with you. And he says it twice, right? Uh, he said it there. We read at the end of verse 19. And then we get into verse 20. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. I like that verse. I would be glad too. Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. Before he says anything about his power, before he says anything about his purpose, before he says anything about, okay, guys, we're, we're, we're on the clock now, right? I'm, I'm, I'm ascending into heaven in 40 days. We've already, raised, we've already wasted one of them. Let's get to work. Now, before he gets into any of that, he starts with his peace. He establishes peace with them. And, and the order is important, right? Because before and underneath any other empowered actions, any other uh, powerful deeds that they will have, they, they need the peace of the Lord. Ephesians 2 talks about this, says that he is our peace. He will be our peace. He has made us one in his peace. And that peace is accomplished when Jesus died on the cross. And so that's why he shows them his hand and his side. Peace be with you. Here's why we can have peace, because of what I have done for you. That's what he tells them. I'm the one who died. You, you guys ran off. You abandoned me. You were, you were too scared. You were too afraid. But I was pierced for your transgressions, right? My, by my stripes you are healed. By my wounds you uh, are healed. My blood covers over your sin. And because of that, there is now peace between you and, and a lot. There's a lot of peace to go around. See, Jesus reconciled us to God through the cross. He, he killed the hostility that existed between you and God. So now there doesn't need to be hostility. Instead, there can be peace. And, and see the proof. See his hand. See his side. It's done. It's accomplished. What he said uh, on the cross. It is finished. And it's, it's, it's a completed action with ongoing implications is the nuance of it. So when he says it is finished, it's finished now. And you will continue to feel the weight of that and the blessing from that and the peace of it as well. So now there is peace. Here's what we have in the way of peace. There is peace between you and God. There's people, I'll say this first. There's peace between you and Jesus. Right? Jesus is your friend. Jesus is your helper. He's not a judge. Now, there's peace between you. So he's there to help you. There's peace between us and the Father. This is why God the Father sent Jesus, right? So that God's justice could be enacted, so that his wrath could be satisfied, so that he could be our substitute. This is what we mean when we say that Jesus died in our place for our sins. He's our substitute. And he's other things. He is our example, right? He is someone who shows us, the, you know, she shows, the big thing, though, he is our substitute. So there's peace between us and God because of Jesus. There's peace between us and others in Christ, our brothers and sisters. We can be reconciled to one another. We don't, hold, we don't have to hold grudges. We don't have to withhold trust. We don't have to uh, let divisions stand between and among us. No, we have been reconciled to God so we can be reconciled to one another. This is why things like prejudice, racism, sexism, all that, it, it has no place in the heart of the Christian. And Paul lays it out, right? He says, there, 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 there's no Jew or Greek, there's no slave or free, there's no male or female before the Lord and in relationship that 
in your relationship between him. That, those aren't changing things. No, all are one in Christ Jesus. So we belong to him. There's peace as well between us and our own souls. You know, we always talk about this. There's the devil, the world, and our flesh, right? That, that's one of the big three. But no, there, there, there's peace in your own soul. Now, have you ever gotten to this place, never been somewhere, where you said to yourself, you, 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 you kicked it, man, you messed up, you did something you shouldn't have done, you hurt somebody, and you look back on that and you say, you know, I, I just, I can never forgive myself for that. Now, I know what you mean. There's probably times when I felt like that. But understand that if you continue down that path, you are placing yourself in the place of the Lord. And, and you're saying, I withhold forgiveness of myself. Whereas it, Jesus died on the cross for that, for that sin, whatever it is. And you're telling Jesus that his death on the cross was good, but it wasn't enough to cover over this other thing. Don't do that, brothers and sisters. Don't put yourself in the place of God in that way. That, that's what Good Friday is for. It reconciles us to him. He draws us to himself. He gives us peace. So, you know, you have some of that. You have some of those past sins. And they, and they pop up from time to time. A lot of times it's the enemy trying to make you feel guilty and, and, and to draw you away from the Lord. Because the more you're focusing on yourself, the less you're focused on him. So reject that. There, there, there's peace between you and your own soul. And someday in God's time, he will take all evil and he will cast it into outer darkness. And he'll do it for you. The last idea here. There's peace between us and the world. So we're here. We do live in a sinful, fallen world. But understand and know that Jesus is going to return to make all things new. And we'll have a new and renewed creation, new heaven and new earth where the things that prevail will be peace and righteousness and King Jesus will be seated on the throne and we will give praise and honor to the Lamb. You hear that and say, well, how do I get that? You receive it. Or you walk away. You receive it or you walk away. He welcomes you. He invites you. He is your peace. Scripture tells us to all who received him, who believe in his name, he gave them, he gave you, he gave us the right to be called children of God. That's what John 1 says. And so since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's what Romans 5 says. Jesus offers that to you. I offer it on his behalf. It is free. I hope that you receive it. And this is why so much this is why so much of what he says here he's concentrating on peace because the peace is foundational. It is a first thing. It is free and everything else is the effect. Right? Everything else is peace is the fruit of peace. And we have peace because of him. To close out just this section, Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you as the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. And we're going to see at Pentecost... The Holy Spirit is going to come. It's going to be sent as our helper. 
And the Holy Spirit is going to give us power to do all that he has for us to do. Okay? And he kind of acts it out in a little bit of, of, a, of an action, of a parable. It says that he breathed on him. He's kind of acting out the Holy Spirit descending upon them. It says that this is how you're going to achieve that. You've got my peace, receive my spirit as well. I'm going to give you that peace, I'll give you that power, I'll give you that purpose, and I'm, I'm, I'm sending you, and I want you to extend my peace, extend my light, extend my truth, extend my life into the world. I'm going back to the Father, but I give you my spirit. Jesus says that he is the power within you, so go and glorify him in the world. Our purpose we talk a lot about our purpose, right? What's, what's our purpose here? In the peace of God, by the power of God, to do the will of God, for the glory of God, and for the good of others. That's what you're here for, brothers and sisters. Let's go and do it. There is peace between you and God. You are an ambassador of Christ. You've been reconciled to him. Live it. Tell others the same. Receive his peace. Receive his power. Receive his purpose. And know that he brings you forward and proclaims his love and peace into your life so that you can do it as well. And it's for his beautiful name. Amen. We'll now worship the Lord with our offerings. We'd invite you to uh, fill out those communication cards as well so that we know that you're here, and uh, we'll do that now. gentlemen. We'll continue with the creed and the prayers and then go into our communion liturgy. Uh, we here believe in the real presence that is that uh, Jesus is with us uh, in the uh, Lord's Supper, uh, body and blood, bread and wine, all four are here in a way that we can't fully explain or understand. And so uh, if that is your belief, if you believe in the real presence, believe in the real presence, we would invite you to come forward uh, and receive the sacrament. If you do not believe that, or do, if you still have questions, uh, we'd still want you to come up, keep your hands folded, I'll, we'll put a blessing on you because uh, Jesus uh, 
loves everybody. So uh, we'll do that now. Please stand. We confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty. we pray. Lord God, in the glorious joy of our continuing celebration of the resurrection of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead, we give you thanks and sing your praise. By his death he destroyed death, and by his rising now gives to all who believe the gift of eternal life in the forgiveness of our sins. Help us to walk with the certainty of a living hope of the eternal life of the world to come. Lord, in your mercy, Give boldness to your whole church throughout the world that your servants, especially your pastors and teachers, proclaim the resurrection of Christ to all people as the objects of your love. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, save and defend our country. Give wisdom and compassion to all in authority that they may serve all people with justice and provide for the maintenance of peace. Lord, in your mercy. Uh, loving, lovingly embrace all who gather to celebrate the remembrance of the most glorious death and resurrection of your Son. Increase faith and hope in the hearts and minds of all who call upon you, especially all who are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any adversity. We name, Lord, uh, those in our hearts now uh, under doctor's care, soon to be having surgery, uh, lots of folks, Lord, who uh, we bring before you. Uh, for Charles and Rachel DuBose, for Jesse Wheeler, uh, Wayne Halbert's dad, uh, uh, Eris Becker, uh, Walter Perryman, Diane Hubel, O.W. Withrow, Conleth Shion, Michelle Marley, Ron Landry, Gavin DeLott, Janelle Kapler, uh, Tavon Perry, Lola Rice, Amy Reed, Pastor Casillas, and those, Lord, who we name in our hearts. By your healing grace, defend us from every evil of body and soul. Lord, in your mercy, we commend to your mercy, O Lord, all your servants who have departed with the sign of faith and now rest in the sleep of peace. Grant to them your mercy and everlasting peace. And on the day of the resurrection of all flesh, grant that we and all your servants of the mystical body of your Son may together be set on his right hand, and hear his most joyous voice, saying, Come, you blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundations of the world. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And hear us, Lord, as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, and most especially are we bound to praise you on this day for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, the very Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and bore the sin of the world. By his dying, he has destroyed death, and by his rising again, he has restored to us everlasting life. 
Therefore, with Mary Magdalene, with Peter and John and Thomas, with all the witnesses of the resurrection, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore, praising you and singing. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the night on which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, this cup is the New Testament, in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins, this do as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Please be seated. I believe in the risen one. I believe I overcome by the power of his blood. Amen.
invite the congregation to stand. O oh God the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Now receive the benediction of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen.